So welcome everybody. I'm Rebecca Richards, um, co-director of the Belmont Gallery of Art with my colleague, uh, Adeen Storer. We run the gallery together. And we're excited about tonight's first ever sort of cooking uh, related event uh, presented by the BGA. And as everybody knows, our current exhibit is Nourish, a feast for the eyes, food for the soul. And we thought it would be a great idea to have um, something around the art of cooking. And we were very fortunate enough to um, have two wonderful chefs who were interested in joining us tonight to do um, a live stream evening on the art of baking. And they're going to have several uh, French galettes and some mulled wine that they're going to share with the audience. And very briefly, um, we'll just talk a little bit about how this came about. My daughter, Isabel Atkinson, is friends with one of the chefs, Nina Vlasic. Um, and I was really excited and pleased when Nina agreed to participate in tonight's event. Um, my daughter has spoken very highly of her. And I have to say on Thanksgiving, we were fortunate enough to um, indulge in a pecan pie. <laughs> made by Nina, which was absolutely scrumptious. So um, so, so thank you very much um, for that. So very briefly, uh, Dean and I are going to introduce each of the chefs um, and then we'll get started. We're gonna turn over the evening really to Nina and Sarah. We're just here pretty much to um, welcome everybody. So um, Nina Vlasic is, she's originally from the Midwest. She has an interesting background because she actually has a master's degree in social work from BU and she worked as a social worker for several years, but there was the constant pull of this other passion for the culinary arts. And so she decided to pursue that passion and she went to the Cambridge School of Culinary Arts. I have that correct, I hope. Yes. Um, and so she's been working as part of a, a, a group of professional chefs called Queen of the Pantry. It's owned and run by women. And Sarah is one of her um, colleagues in that business. And they'll talk a little bit about that. And Nina currently lives um, in the seaport with her boyfriend. And we're big dog people here at the BGA. So <laughs> I have to mention her two dogs, Rocket and Rebel, because I've got two dogs right behind me as well. Um, <laughs> so, so thank you. Again, the BGA is really pleased to present this first event. And we're going to have a Dean talk a little bit about Sarah. Uh, uh, Chef Sarita is uh, Nina's partner in crime. Um, I'm I, no, still <laughs> muted. No, no, we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> um, I I don't I'm not as familiar with these ladies as as Rebecca is, but I can see on the screen um, that Sarita is a 29 year old Latina born and raised in northern New Jersey. Um, but thank goodness she's up in Massachusetts to be closer <laughs> to her older sister. And um, I see that you've done an Instagram series called Baking with Sarita, which I'd love to check out. I will have to look at that later. We will definitely share uh, your Instagram and, and other things with everybody in an email afterwards. Thank you. I also, I, I just want to give a shout out also to... Um, to Julie DiStefano, um, who's a producer at the Belmont Media Center. And she is working with us tonight to live stream the event. And we couldn't do it without her help and the help of the BMC. So thank you. Awesome. All right, perfect. Well, let's right. get started, right? Can we talk about Queen We're of the Yes, please. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, so Sarah and I know each other um, from working at Queen of the Pantry. Um, it's run by a wonderful woman named Yvette Taylor. And she does catering um, for like dinner parties. So if you're interested, let us know. Um, but also we, <laughs> we also <laughs> do we also prepare um, weekly meals for clients as well. Um, yeah, is there anything else? Healthy weekly meals um, definitely cater to their liking. So every week is a different you know different meal. It's not like you know boring the same old thing. Mm -hmm. You try to spice things up. For our clients and it's been really fun yeah it's yeah. completely customizable completely mm -hmm. up to the top to the client different diets mm -hmm. um you know if you don't we just definitely we make sure that we cater to our clients that's the that's the most important thing because everybody loves food you know what i'm yeah. saying so we have to make it fun mm -hmm. and exciting for our clients so that we definitely make mm -hmm. sure that every week the menu is exciting and they're like looking forward to eating their food for mm -hmm. that week so that's definitely 
it's exciting and it's it's, yeah. like, it's also exciting to work with all women. Mm -hmm. You know, we definitely empower each other, so it's it's a really really good business. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> all right, let's get let's started. Let's dive into it. So wow. first, we're gonna do the well. Okay. Um, first, yep. So what we're gonna make today, we're making three galettes: um, an apple filled one, um, a fig and goat cheese, chevrolet cheese, and then um, a the, winter squash. Yep, a winter mm -hmm. squash one. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess we kind of wanted to talk a bit about um, pies, tarts, and galettes mm -hmm. because they all are very, very similar to each other. Um, so pies are usually have a steeper slope and um, like in the baking dish and then tarts are open faced, um, which are actually quite similar to how galettes are made. Um, galettes, I consider more of like a rustic free form mm -hmm. pie, or uh, sorry, tart. Um, and you can literally put like sweet or savory. Um, Any type of building you want, sweet, savory, sweet and savory, whatever type of building you want, you can go crazy with it and they're delicious. Yeah. Yeah, and so like the French term galette is um, means. I can't remember it. You uh, say it. Okay. I can't remember it. So, yeah. So the um, galette, the term means um, like a smooth, flat pebble, like a stone surface almost, um, and that be that becomes like an all-encompassing term for like um, all round pastry and cakes, and even some types of cookies, um, and like that's how it was like kind of perceived historically. Um, but currently we see, uh, we now see galettes as like a rustic tart, essentially. Um, do we want to show them like what we have already made so you can kind of know what they're looking for? Oh yeah, to? sure. Let's do that. Just so we can kind of see what we're looking for, what we're looking for. This is basically what we're going to be making today. These are one of the galettes. This one is the um, winter squash. So you see it's very rustic. It's the the um the dough is very flaky, buttery, delicious, mm -hmm. and you can literally put any type of fillings that you want. It's you can, and this actually is fun to do with kids too. It is. It's so simple. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the rim, you can literally do anything. You know, it's just you have to what what is like uh, make like cool. a border. Yeah, mm -hmm. make a border so that the filling doesn't come out. But this is basically what we're making today. Yeah. Three different fillings. All right, mm -hmm. perfect. Okay. <laughs> I have to show this. Everybody knows what, what we're looking for. So. All right. So I'm going to grab the butter from the fridge, and then um, Sarah is going to demonstrate um, the process of uh, making the dough. Perfect. Would you like me to put up the recipe for the dough? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to and again, we will share all these things afterwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can take a screenshot. But uh, we will share all these things with anyone who participated. Okay. So in this bowl right here. Harold, um, let me unshare. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So in this bowl right here is just um, uh, like one cup or, or 150 grams of flour and salt. Um, and then we also have ice cold water. The temperature is super important. Mm -hmm. And I can explain a bit later with that why. Um, and then we also have here um, some cubed, very cold butter, mm -hmm. which is also very important. It needs to be really cold. Okay. So with the butter, we actually cut it up into little cubes and we put it into, put it in the freezer or the fridge? Fridge. We put it into the fridge. So that's the first thing we did, put it in the fridge, make sure it's super cold. So once we, you know, we'll talk about why it needs to be really cold, but mm -hmm. make sure that it's really, really cold. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. So flour, do you want to just, so flour in general, mm -hmm. like there's so many different types of flour. Um, we we chose to use all purpose flour, but you could also use pastry flour. Um, the difference between like maybe bread flour and all purpose for pastry flour is the um, amount of protein content in the flour. So we chose all purpose flour because we liked the protein content, the percentage, and um, we, it, the all purpose flour produces more structure. Um, and with galettes, that's kind of what we were going, that's what we want. Um, pastry flour, if we use pastry flour, that would mean that it would be a, like, a, like a little bit more flakier, um, but it would not contain a lot of the moisture that is produced from the fruit when it hits the oven. Okay, so, um, and butter, we chose butter as the fat because um, it's just a very, it tastes good um, and, yeah, like you could also use shortening also, and that produces a very flaky crust. But um, 
Again, it's we're going to, but we're all about the taste here. You want that butter flavor. <laughs> you really don't, do. Don't, <laughs> just use butter. Yeah, okay. butter butter saves it all. Because okay. um, it adds like a lot of richness and flavor um, and texture because the butter, is, since it's a fat, it tenderizes the crust. Um, so, and we're, oh, sorry. No, no, go on, okay. go on. Um, and so what Sarah's doing right now is, um, it's called sable, and that means cutting the butter with the flour. So right now she's just breaking up pieces of the butter and um, she'll get to a point where it will become um, like coarse sand or coarse cornmeal. And you'll also notice that the color of the flour will change subtly mm -hmm. and it'll become a soft yellow tone or like almost an off-white color. Um, and you can, you'll be able to like smell the butter in the flour. Um, but so, yeah, and then, um, so the type of dough we're, we're making for the galette, um, we can, we're making a mealy dough, okay? There's, there's multiple type, types of dough, um, but we chose mealy dough because, um, because again, like just the structural purposes of the galette that we're going for um, is in the, like it, the size of the butter chunks really matter. Um, so, for a really flaky crust, then you want to leave the butter sizes like a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. But since we're making a mealier dough, um, she's going to break up the pieces of butter really, really tiny. And the again, teeny tiny crumbs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You see how it's holding yeah. together? Yeah. Do you want to show them a yeah, little bit? Let me see a little bit more. But yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to show you what I'm in the middle of the process. So when I, it's, it's still a little bit, you know, there's, there's still little, um, big pieces in there. I'm gonna continue to work with it so I can make the crumb a little bit smaller. But when this I- This looks a little like cord flour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You see the color change because of the butter and, yep. Yeah, so right now she's still, it's still called sable because she's cutting the butter into the flour and the fat is going to encapsul encapsulate the flour, um, which in turn, makes it change into that um, off-white, soft yellow color. I think we are almost there. Okay. Yep. Awesome. And it's fun to do. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> Cooking is so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then once like Sarah gets to a point yeah. where she feels like it looks I think coarse. It looks good, yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, we can use ice water. And the liquid, you can use milk if you want to, but again, we choose ice water. Um, and the it needs to be co really cold because when you put it in a hot oven, um, the moisture from it will cause the um, butter to expand and create like a flake, like a flaky dough because it's like cold butter meeting a hot oven. Um, and so that temperature difference will increase the flakiness um and but the funny thing is it's kind of it's almost like a goldilocks situation meaning that like while we have like about um, a quarter cup of ice cold water in our recipe um we recommend using that amount however um by you'll be able to tell if the dough needs to be a little bit more hydrated um when you're making it and that could be like you could maybe use a little bit more than a quarter cup or a little bit less than a quarter cup. It's really all about feeling it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. once Sarah adds about a fourth of a cup into here, um, mm -hmm. awesome. Um, she'll be able to show you what the consistency will look like. A little, a little bit of time. Yeah, and we're gonna just, just do a little bit at a time, time. Um, just to ensure that all the pieces are properly hydrated. And a task that Sarah can do is um, she can squeeze the dough between her fingers a little bit, and if it sticks together enough that it just comes together, then it's hydrated enough. Mm -hmm. um, this process is also called the papillon stage. Um, so she's like um, you, you, using her hands to- Massage, <laughs> we need to massage the flour butter mixture. That's basically how you do that. That's basically how yeah. you do that. And then, yeah. so, and also like while she's adding the liquid and the more she like um, massages the liquid, liquid into the 
uh, flour butter mixture. Mm -hmm. That's also that's called frisage. Frisage, well. yes. Oh. All right. Is that about a quarter cup? Yes. A little bit less. No, it was. It was actually a quarter cup. Okay. Yep. Can and I feel it? Yep. Great. Yes. <laughs> yep. All right. So it looks pretty good, and if you'll notice, like, um, let's see. So on this side, I don't know if you can see it, but like there might be some like drier chunks on the bottom. And like what you can do is you can either remove the dough here and put it somewhere else while you like hydrate a little bit of the um, dough in here. Or if you want to, you can just add a little bit of water um, without separating it. You just have to be really careful. Um, so you want to add like a tiny bit of water like on the bottom. Like, do you see where it's? A little bit teeny bit of water. Yeah, just a teeny bit of water. Um, and it still definitely feels good. Uh-huh. We'll definitely need to hold well together. Yeah. So, yep. Awesome. Perfect. Cool. All righty. All right. So we're just gonna um shape it into round discs. Um, three discs. We're splitting the dough up into three different um, portions. And the reason we want to shape it into round discs, because it makes it easier to, um, to roll it out, yep. to roll out mm -hmm. into that round shape that you want. It's not going to be perfect, but it helps us get there a little yep. bit faster. Um, so I'm going to grab the saran wrap real quickly. I'm just rolling into three little balls. And it should hold well together. Well, like Connie just said, if it's if it's still really if it's still dry, you can add a little bit more water. And we got three perfect balls. Perfect. So make them into this. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Looks great. Looks beautiful. Oh, I'm going to show them. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Oh, can you? Hello. Okay, so we have three discs. So this is how one disc look. Okay, I'm just gonna put it in saran wrap. So I have one disc, saran wrap, another disc, saran wrap, and then wrap them all and then put them into the freezer. There you go. Or refrigerator. Or refrigerator. Yep. And then you want the dough to chill for about, um, if you put it in the freezer, maybe about 10, 15 minutes, because you still want to be able to roll it out. Um, but if you put it in the refrigerator, it probably would need a solid like 30 minutes up to an hour. Um, but yeah. So Nina and Sarah, so the three discs, are those for each of the three that you're making? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So we have three discs already made. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's called magic. <laughs> so now we're gonna show you. So once they have, um, they once once them out, take them out the fridge, you're going to take them out the saran wrap, and now we're gonna roll them out. So we can fill them with our beautiful building. Yeah. They actually just took these out of the freezer, so it might take a second yeah. for it to thaw of it. <laughs> yeah, these how they look. Beautiful. Would you like me to show the recipe for the, the apple or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah the apple. we can start with the yep. apple one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they are? Okay, so that's all. Lots of them. So we can discuss um, the apple filling and how we made the apple filling. Yeah. I will get the apple. Okay. I'm just preparing the surface right now with um, some like a light uh, sprinkle of flour because um, it, it makes the, um, the dough not stick to the surface. But you have to be careful, especially with like pastry doughs. There's a specific ratio of like water and flour, dry and liquid ingredients. So you don't want to go overboard with the flour or else that could completely throw it off. Um, so I'm just gonna do like a light sprinkle. And while I'm doing that, Sarah can talk about um, the apple mixture that we have prepared. So 
So what we did was we actually cut the apples to very, very thin slice up in slices. We used a mandolin to slice them. You can slice them with a knife, whichever way you prefer. Um, and then we used, well, who made, made this apple filling? Um, <laughs> um, so there's brown sugar, um, a little bit of salt, a little bit of lemon juice, right? Lemon juice yeah. also, mm -hmm. just to brighten it up, but also to prevent the apples from browning because um, like you want to be able to have the apples, brown sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg to like mm -hmm. sit out for a while. So it creates like you this can't really see it too well. <laughs> um, and like the flavors to really um, like become part of the apple. And the spices that we use was we use nutmeg and some cinnamon. That's what we use for the spices. Can I ask our pink lady? I, I know I know a fair amount about yeah. apples, but pink ladies are they like a sweeter apple than like um, you know like when you know there's some apples that are very tart. Are pink ladies mm -hmm. a little sweeter or? Yes. Um, I feel like pink ladies are sweeter. Yeah. yeah sweeter. Like Granny's, like for example, we use Granny Smith in the malt mm -hmm. wine because it has a tartar flavor. Mm -hmm. And yep. pink lady is just um, like a I, nice uh, fruit to cook with. Yeah. Pink but they are they are sweeter though. Granny's with a more like the tart um, um, pink lady are sweeter. So that's for sure. Yeah. I'll put this back here. Let me get to the dough. Is it? <laughs> Sod a little bit. <laughs> this one's still a little bit, a little bit hard. All right. We should have taken these out earlier, but we left them in the <laughs> fridge a little bit too too long, and they're kind of hard. But that is okay. That's what happens in baking. It just <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. You're just gonna knead it in your hand to exactly. warm it up a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> and this apple filling is really, really good. <laughs> One thing I say about apple filling is don't add too much lemon because then that'll make it really, um, I guess tart. So, yeah. Yeah. It'll make it. That happened to me a few times baking apple pie. I add a little bit too much lemon juice and it just messed it all up. So make sure you're light with the lemon juice, just so that they don't brown up and everything. And it does add a little bit of flavor, but just it doesn't. Um, it prevents the apples from browning up. Yeah, but these is these are really really delicious. Mm. I'm going to try one. I know I want some too. <laughs> mm. Yep. And we're gonna pair this with um a maple syrup, maple syrup um whipped cream. Yep. Delicious. Did you want to make that now? Yes, yeah, we're now. Let's Perfect. Just do it while we yeah. we're gonna make the whipped cream right now while we let um the dough thaw a bit more. I can put up the recipe for the whipped cream. Yes, please. Thank you. So what I did, you don't you don't have to do this, but what we did because as we are presenting it is I put my uh, my bowl in the freezer to get keep it really really cold to help whip up the cream faster. When you say in the recipe your choice of spices. How crazy like, can you could, get? I mean, like, I mean, I've done like a pumpkin spice whipped cream with a lot of like the pumpkin spice from like Trader Joe's, um, and then extra cinnamon and nutmeg. You could use allspice, um, whatever flavor you're going for. So, Sarah. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Hi, Sorry, Sarah. Sarah. No, no, mute yourself, please. See you Okay, so now we have. Okay, I'm gonna be whipping the whipped cream right now. I'm so sorry about that. That's all right. This is this is a fun informal no, improvisation. Okay, yes. okay, okay. So hi. <laughs> hi. It makes us all feel more comfortable. I love you, Sarah. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I just, I think I just learned something new. So the two of you just said like the whipping cream should be, it should be cold. Yes. Yeah, yes. Like don't let it sit out on the counter for like an hour while you're, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. No, yeah. It just makes it easier for the, um, for the air to be incorporated mm -hmm. into the cream. And it just makes the process of whipping the cream a bit faster. So what about the fine right now, but sorry about that. No, I wanted to say the fine line, sometimes when it turns into butter, you have to really kind of. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You don't want to whip it too much. Otherwise yes. you'll get butter. Um, but yeah. You'll get maple butter. You'll okay. get maple, <laughs> maple butter. Which, I mean, that's still good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the result will taste delicious. Um, but yeah, sorry for the noise. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> no, no, noise is good. I know it's very quiet. <laughs> you have to help us feel we can make a racket in the kitchen. <laughs> wow. Is the mixer actually on? It is so quiet. What product are you using? <laughs> we all want to go out and buy it. <laughs> yeah, very quiet. I just want to put in a word for science here. <laughs> this may be an art gallery and this may be the art of baking, but these ladies are doing chemistry here. Yes, I was going to say baking is really, it. yes, you have to be quite precise. <laughs> may I ask a question? Oh, hi, Dari, of course. Sorry, I had my hand up and you didn't know. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. It's okay. So I just was wondering, are you going to be um, putting the recipes up later because the screenshots yeah. were too quick for me to write everything down. Because we I will absolutely share the recipes with everyone. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, it's more write? just an orientation to have the slide so you can sort of see. Oh, okay, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna mute myself again now. Okay. Bye, yeah. Derry. Bye. 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 Okay, here we go. More whipped cream. Yep. Okay, so to the whipped cream, I'm going to show you guys in a, in a second. I'm still whipping it, but I wanted to show you what I incorporated. So I have a little bit of maple syrup to sweeten up the cream. Okay, I'm still whipping it, so it's still a little loose. And then I also added some cinnamon. I mean, you can do like, um, the, the recipe is there, but like, you know, sprinkle some cinnamon, like a half a teaspoon is what we put in the recipe, mm -hmm. and then whip it up until soft peaks, and you can use it to dollop over your apple pie. But make sure to put it when it's a little bit cool, because we don't want it like a yeah. soup. <laughs> um, and whipped cream or anything, like, you want to make it and then use it almost immediately. Mm -hmm. um, so, but right now we're, oh, oh, okay. but right now we're just going to stick it in the fridge once it's fully developed. Um, so yeah. How's it go? How's it go with it? It's good. Oh, perfect. Yay. Nina? Yeah. So so that looks, is that like a French rolling pin? I mean, is that the it's the style of rolling pin that you prefer? I like this one, yeah. Um, because it's like narrower on the end, which makes it more like even pressure in the center. Um, and it's a little thicker in the center, which is where you really want to um, roll the dough with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I like this. Um, but honestly, I feel like it's really what your preference is and what you feel most comfortable using. You're very close. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who's joining. We really appreciate it. We're having so much fun. Rebecca, it's Kim. You know what I was thinking in the warm, in the colder months now. That's my sister. Fun. 
Hi. <laughs> Um, it would be fun to probably like get together, like we always right, you know, like on weekends and come to Perfection. my house and, and bake this. Oh, sure. okay. One, two, three. If, it, yep. if it's ah, okay, we're <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just so everybody knows. Okay. Always ready. If I can do this, okay. Okay. <laughs> before there's a light sprinkle of flour here and um i like to pick up the dough and move it a bit just to maintain that shape and also to prevent um the dough from sticking to the surface you see i'm great to do the kids too yeah and this is like super fun to do the kids mm -hmm. definitely it's okay to be messy it is and so we kind of have like a round shape going right now and it's okay. It doesn't have to be like perfect. There's like some like um, scraggly bits, but that's totally okay. Because um, we're folding that over. Exactly. So um, it's all good. And like like I said, I'm like rotating the dough so it doesn't stick in one spot. And so it also rolls evenly too. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and something else that's really important about pie dough or pastry dough in general is that the refrigerator and freezer are your friend. Um, if this becomes too warm and starts sticking to either the surface or um, your rolling pin, you wanna put it on a sheet pan, flat, and stick it either in the freezer or the fridge. Um, the freezer for like 10 minutes, fridge for like 20 minutes, um, because the dough really needs to be cold. Um, but right now it's, it's like, it's cold to the touch, um, but if I keep it out any longer, then like the butter will start to melt, mm -hmm. which then makes it difficult to roll it because it's sticking to the um, rolling pin or the surface. Um, and the yeah. reason I sorry, uh, and the reason I don't want to add too much flour mm -hmm. is because sir, someone's calling you. And um, sorry, one second. Yeah. Okay, so the reason sorry, um, the reason that um. We don't want to add more flour is because of the hydration and dry flour ratio that we have here. And if the butter melts and we still work with it and we bake it, it will make the dough tough, right? Yeah. Mm. We don't want they want we flaky. Don't, you want flaky, yeah. tender. So if you see that it's so do you see to... how it did this? Yeah. So that's like that's not great. So I'm probably gonna have to stick this in the fridge for a little bit because that's not what you want. <laughs> that means the butter is getting um, soft and it needs to remain cold. Um, do you have a sheet pan? I can put yes, this right, right here. This is our sheet pan. So I'm just gonna put this here um, and stick it in the fridge um, while we start rolling out the other um, discs that we have. So when we roll out the dough, we want it to be about between like one eighth to one quarter inch thick. Like a one quarter inch thick is about the same as a pie. Um, so we're kind of going for that in between. Did you want to roll? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, this one's definitely getting. Yeah. We have a rolling table. This one's so getting. This one is getting. Do you want to try the other one? Yeah. You might need to say this in the fridge again. All right. Yep. The other one's a little bit. I think the other one might work better. All right, perfect. How are pie dolls looking at her that we did earlier? In the 
Yeah, okay. Any more flowers for our surface? Mm -hmm. I mean, I always think about, remember Julia Child, she dropped a chicken on the floor and she just picked it up and took it off. On top of it. So they can still work with it. <laughs> See, I love cooking and I love baking because it's just, it's fun. You get, to, you, you get to experiment. If you make a mistake, you can easily fix it. Like, it's just, it's super fun. So look, we fixed it. Yay. <laughs> See, if that happens, that's not good. That means it's too warm. It's too warm. But we're just going to roll with it because... We're just going to roll with it. It's all right. <laughs> it is okay. I know in the British baking show, they're always running for the freezer in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> they're working inside a tent in the, the blast freezer. Mm -hmm. I know. All right, I think we're good with this one. Awesome. So All right. we rolled this out, we made it work. It's round. Beautiful. It's perfect. <laughs> um, so now we're just gonna place the apple filling um, in it. Okay. So you wanna All right, leave perfect. maybe an inch or two on the edges around the um, circumference because you're gonna end up folding the dough mm -hmm. over a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna place the apples. You don't have to do it any like specific way, um, but- We're fancy. So we, we like this it. spiral method, but you can also, I don't know, can you see this? Mm-hmm. Can you like we're starting a spiral, but I've all but you can also literally just like plop the apples in or arrange it something like that and have it go in like rows on top of each other. Mm -hmm. um, but we really like a spiral. Right. Is it important to have them really thinly sliced um, for this, you know, um, kind of a pastry? I think mean, yes, or it won't be so it won't get soggy. Yeah, you want to make right, sure that it's right. thin. Yeah, because we're not we're not cooking this for like like an apple pie. Like when we usually bake it, it's like what like a forty five minutes or something mm -hmm. to bake an apple pie. This one is like a good 25, 30 minutes. It's quick, you know. So we don't want it too too thick. We want it thin. Um, we don't want it getting too soggy and overcooking the apples, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, so the apple should still be tender when mm -hmm. you stick it in the oven. Um, but again, since it's a slightly quicker um, baking time, you want the apples to be a little bit thinner. And that's why we usually prep all the toppings beforehand. Like we usually cook the toppings beforehand. So we just have to, you know, we, um, we assemble it in the, in the dough and bake it quickly. Everything's already pre-cooked. The apples, obviously, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna cook them, but if you don't mm. want them too, too thick. Nice yeah. and thin, we beautiful. Did you want to fold? Did you want to do the honors and folding it? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, we're gonna fold it down. And then fold. Actually, with this, you can have fun with it. You can literally do it however way you want to do it. Like I say it's all about having fun. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna taste good. I mean, that's the most important yeah. thing. And the theme is rustic, right? So it's casual. Um, comfort food. I mean, we love rustic. <laughs> <laughs> in the, uh, I had to make tarps and uh, my shop instructor, one day he told us, okay, no more rustic tarps. They have to be fancy, like fine dining tarps. And we were all devastated just because that put a lot more uh, pressure, pressure yeah. on it, <laughs> us to make things look really like fine dining presentable um oh yeah so right now we're gonna put this on a sheet pan okay. and again because the temperature is really important when this hits the oven it needs to be in it needs to be really really cold so we're just gonna put this in the freezer 
um, to freeze for a bit. Um, I'm just going to show everybody so you oh, yeah. can see a close up. Look how beautiful. And once we um, freeze it, we'll for like how, how long would you say you have to freeze it? We could it? just, we could, I mean, for sake of time, like 10 minutes. So, like 10 minutes when we take it out, we're going to brush it with egg wash and then um, sprinkle with some turbinado sugar. It's yep. going to be delicious. Beautiful. And if anybody has any questions about anything that we just did, feel free to ask. Well, can, can I ask, so would the three of them go in at the same temperature, even though they have different fillings? Like, could you cook yep. the three of them together? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just make sure that that actual dough is cooked. So everything inside will already be edible, already be cooked inside. Okay. So the, the, what's important is making sure that that the actual dough is cooked. Yep. What is the temperature that the uh, glaze have to be put in at? 400. 400. Okay. Thank you. 400 degrees. Yep. Have you ever put food coloring in the dough to make them different Ooh. colors? You totally can. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just be careful not to add too much because it is a liquid. And that might throw the um, dry ingredient and liquid ratio off just a bit, but I don't, but like I, it would totally work. I wonder if maybe putting the, um, the food coloring in the ice water, mixing it like oh, yeah. that and then putting it. Yeah. You can do that. See, well, I mean, experiment. It's all about experimenting. Maybe <laughs> like, you know, putting the food coloring in the ice water. So when you add the ice water, it already has a food coloring in it. And then you can just, you know, um, to do it like that and see, you know. I think that yeah, that's perfect. Only yeah. a few on St. Patrick's Day. We should do that. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. That'd be cool. Oh, yes. Okay, so this one is the winter squash filling. So we have some butternut squash that we roasted in the oven at like 425, a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt. That's it. Really delicious on its own. Delicious. <laughs> then we have some shaved um, Brussels sprouts. Raw, we didn't roast it. Um, there's no need to do it because when we put it in the oven, it's gonna cook and um, crisp up, delicious. And then we have some bacon. We already cooked the bacon. And then we also have ricotta cheese to dollop. It's going to be amazing. And then what do we have for the for the edges? We have the it's a sesame seeds, right? It's, um, oh, flaky salt. flaky salt. And some flaky salt on the edges when it's time to bake. Okay. All right, so you want, you want me to do this one? Sure. Yeah, okay. So we'll do, we're just gonna place, and again, you can do however way you want. I'm just gonna place the butternut squash, leaving the rim, leaving some, some like maybe like- oh An inch. Maybe. Like an inch, so we can be able to hold it up. Gonna do the butternut squash. And these are just fillings that we came up with, but you can literally do any fillings, yeah. Yeah, I've seen some fillings with like um, a little bit of pesto, tomatoes, um, or even in like mozzarella. That sounds really good. Um, instead of apples and pears? I yeah, mean, and then pears, obviously, too, um, instead of apples, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's like really up to your um, your taste buds. <laughs> it's a little like making a collage. It's it edible is, yeah. collage. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's art. <laughs> have you ever done a party where you do make your own galette like a, a sunday party mm -hmm. where you have all the ingredients on the table and everybody can kind of mix and match thank you for the idea yeah thank you for the idea, yeah, for yeah. The idea. no one's ever <laughs> asked us to do that but we would love to all right so now i'm just going to dot some ricotta in between the um butternut squash i mean oh that's so good <laughs> and it's fun to play around with the different mm -hmm. colors of vegetables too um just because like since the like the artistic piece is really what you're what is that window essentially so you can kind of play around with the different um colors as well well you know what i mean why not Add a little bit more. <laughs> we love ricotta cheese it's such a creamy um nice cheese then we have the Brussels, which we just, it was super easy. We just cut into tiny pieces, you know. And then sprinkle that over. Did you use the Madeleine for the Brussels sprouts? No, 
Or you just mm-hmm. cut, cut them with a knife? You just cut it, cut it really thinly. Cut it in half, cut the core out, and I just cut it really, really thin. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. the best part, bacon. <laughs> <laughs> we have the bacon over that. I mean, this is like mm. super good. All right. Okay. Just awesome. a little bit more green just because. Yeah, know. go for it. All right. Do it up. Okay. All right. You gonna fold this one up too? Yeah. No, thank you. Okay, so fold that. And this one is kind of like a sweet and savory because the yeah. butternut squash is sweet. So it's just, it's the perfect combination. And the leftover butternut squash, you can make a, uh, eat it. That's what I did earlier. <laughs> That's what I did. We, we had also munched on some bacon. We had leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> leftovers are good for creativity. Yeah. yeah. And then that's how that's this one looks. Like, oh. like that. Mm. Like I said, everything inside is already cooked. So we just want to make sure that the dough is cooked in the oven, baked in the oven. So everything is cooked inside. So just going to. Delicious. Okay. I know. I wish we had like smell a vision, right? I know. <laughs> if you press this button, you can see. <laughs> I feel like soon we'll have that, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. With all this technology, we're going to have that soon. And then the last one is right here. Yes. Do you want more flour? Or yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got it for you. Thank you. Some of the tea so Nina and Sarah, is this also a, like, the fig one? Is this a combination that the two of you just kind of thought up? Let's think about these yeah. different things yeah. together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So we actually wanted to do fresh figs, but they're not in season. So we're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, what do we do? What do we do? Okay, let's rehydrate the dry figs, cut them up and put that on top. So mm-hmm. I can actually say what we did with that. Um, it should be in the recipe, but... The figs, um, they're obviously not fresh, but they're still really, really delicious. What we did was we got a little bit of warm water. Well, no, we got um, something like maybe four or five, a handful of the dried figs, put them in a bath of warm water, and then left them there for about like five minutes. If they're still kind of hard and the water is cold, you want to dump out the cold water and put a little bit more warm water until they kind of soften up. And then once they're softened up, you get to cut them and they look like this and they're super delicious. So we have, for this one, we have um, fig, rehydrated figs, <laughs> a little bit of rosemary, some goat cheese and Ooh, some um, caramelized um, shallots. Yep. yep. And the rosemary was just, we wanted some little pop of green mm-hmm. to put on um, the galette at the end once it's done baking. Um, if you put it in the oven with the rosemary on it, the rosemary is gonna burn because the temperature of the oven is really hot. We want to add public because this is like, you know, we have dark brown, we have this. We wanted to add some type of color to it to have it, you know, to brighten it up a little bit. That's the art again. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that one looks beautiful. Right here, the top wings. And have a little bit of some uh, mold wine. <laughs> it's delicious. Did anyone make the mold wine recipe? Oh yeah! Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you need <Nice>. a refill. <laughs> yeah, refill your glass. Almost done. Almost done. <laughs> it's so good though. Yeah. Okay. And just so everyone knows, we will be sharing the recipes uh, again at the end. And, and I'll put the slides up if you want to do screenshots, but we'll send everybody the PDF that um, Chef Sarah and Nina made. <laughs> All right, so right now I'm just like placing the figs, again, leaving about an inch around the edge. So we kept um, enough to fold over.
I think dry figs are better than uh yeah. Dry um, figs are sweet. Yeah, I feel I think they're kind of they're, they're like for this, I think it would be better dry figs than the fresh figs. I don't know, personally. I love dry figs. They're extra sweet. Oh, they're so delicious. <laughs> so we're using um chevre cheese, goat cheese. It's very creamy, um, very it melts well. And it tastes really good, mm -hmm. especially with the sweetness of the figs and then the um, acidity from the shallots. It's a really nice combination. I'm just like plopping the cheese in between the figs. Is there a rule of thumb for how, how thick you want the filling to be or? or not too thick or not too thin? Yeah, um, you don't want it to be, um, like you wanna be able to cook it, right? Cause if you, cause you want the fruit to soften enough, um, you want- um, I would say one layer. You don't want to too yeah. much because you don't want it to, over, you wanna overfill it and then it, you know, oozes it, out. Cook, it yeah. oozes out or it doesn't cook all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, so you want, it, I guess like for, like if, let's say for this one, right, we have the fig and cheese. You want just one layer. So one layer fig with the cheese, and then we can sprinkle over a little bit of the of the um, the caramelized shallots. Yeah. But you definitely do not want to overfill it. I say a layer um, because then it's just going to, it's going to be too heavy. And then it won't bake all the way through. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So now I'm just like plopping down the shallots anywhere. Oh, there's a tar seasoning. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes, right. yes, yes. And then yes. we also like to add a bit of the tar seasoning. Okay. Just gonna sprinkle off. We can be okay. Awesome. So now I'm just gonna quickly crimp the edges. Then we'll have magic in a little bit. <laughs> then uh, there's yeah, magic, some magic yeah. in like five seconds, I think. We're gonna show you guys a little bit of magic. So just hold <laughs> on. You're gonna Are see. there particular magic words that we should learn? Um. Oh, that's like a. Oh, I don't even. Um. I was gonna say shabam. That's like so shabam. like tacky. Is there a pastry no. word <laughs> we can say? I don't know. Frassage. <laughs> <is good enough. laughs> Good, sounds good. Massage. It's like it's fancy, right? And this is oh goat cheese and fig. Delicious. Okay. All right. So as soon as I put this in the um fridge, we can say the magic word. Yes, we'll say magic word. One second. <laughs> Do you want to let it chill for like about how long? Maybe like 10 minutes in the fridge? In the freezer, sorry. Mm -hmm. In the freezer, it can be 10 minutes. Um, but in the fridge, I would say 30 to 45 minutes. Um, but oh we didn't okay, we can say the magic word now. And then massage. Massage. They chill, guys. It's been 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes, guys. We have them already <laughs> pre-made. I mean, no, 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 oh my God, just, just, what? just outed us out. <laughs> and this is how they look. We have the apple, the um, winter squash, and then the fig and goat cheese. And now we're going to- um, We use egg wash, which yeah. is li literally just one egg and a splash of cream. Um, and you like whisk, whisk it together. I use the fork, but you can use a whisk. And it becomes this pale yellow color. And, like the bowl is yellow. So you might not be able to see it, but um, it's just like a really soft yellow right now. And what we're gonna do, so the egg wash, so you can do egg wash multiple different ways. You can do it with milk, you can do it with cream, water, um, anything like that. But we like the cream and um, egg mixture the best because it gives it, we think it gives it the best color um, on the galette. I was muted before, but I was asking. So it's not the egg whites. It's like the whole, it's the yolk it's and the, the egg. egg. Okay. So thank one you. egg and a splash of cream. Yep. Okay. And if you really want to be like specific, 
you can do just the yolk or you can do just mm -hmm. the white. One just contains a bit more fat than the other. So the yolk will have more fat and that'll be emulsified. Um, the white just has a lot more protein. So we just like to use like one whole egg and whisk it with cream. But it's, I guess it's preference. And if you, you can do like an experiment too uh, with different egg washes, just to see the different mixtures and how they, um, how they bake in the oven. Cause it's actually really interesting. You'll see like a bunch of different tones. So I'm using a pastry brush and I'm just going to lightly coat the sides all around. And then I'll add my topping. I mean, the yeah, the topping. So for the apple pie, we're gonna do turbinado sugar. And I'm actually gonna mix a little bit of cinnamon with the turbinado sugar, just, um, just because. <laughs> Can give it a little bit more extra flavor. And then for the fig and um, goat cheese, we're gonna do some toasted sesame seeds. Sprinkle that all around. And it also just makes it look really, really beautiful. Feast for the eyes. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Is this one? Oh, oh. oh yeah. And then for the winter squash, we're gonna do some flaky salt. And you can just do normal salt, salt mm -hmm. too. Um, you can do salt. pink salt, yeah. you can do normal salt, you can do flaky salt. This is making me so hungry. I, I really wish I could taste these. <laughs> I'll save you some. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good deal. Mm -hmm. So with the egg wash, you want to make sure there's no dry bits, but you also want to be careful that like it's not going to drip off because the egg will literally, yeah. So right now you, there's a little bit of drippage, which we'll have to wipe off um, before we stick it in the oven. It's just because that'll just bake. But um, but yeah, so the egg wash just needs to be like a thin layer. Go do the salt. Oh. Oh, uh, sure. Yay. Um, so, so the egg needs to be a thin layer over the surface of it um, to create that really nice golden color that you're looking for in a baked product. All right. So clean up the- Yeah, so the I'm just gonna quickly clean this off. Oh, and another thing. Um, okay. Don't egg wash. Um, if you're gonna leave it in the fridge for a while. Only egg wash if you're going to, if after it, the dough is cold and then you're gonna immediately put it in the oven. So we're, gonna, so we're just gonna stick this in the oven. Yes. For about 25 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can I ask the kind of pan that you're using? How it's actually like on that, like on a grid. Um, so oh, yeah. okay, you know what? Actually, we can show them. I will show yeah, you so this one. We were so you, just, shouldn't um, put, you shouldn't like, put it like directly on the on the pan, Nina. Like, um, mm -hmm. should you use that so, kind of a? Well, you can. You can. We okay. just um, we just wanted to create enough space for the hot air to reach the bottom, so it's not uh, like so the bottom bakes evenly. But it's really not necessary. This is just an extra precaution on our end. Okay. Um, but usually, like for like for other things, I would just put it on a sheet pan with parchment paper, and then that usually does it. But just for just to be like super cautious here, we're just doing we're using this grid, this dry, this, what is it drying to dry yeah. cooling rack, a cooling rack, cooling yeah, rack. That's, that's right for <laughs> cookies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, just to ensure that the base is um, evenly cooked through. I'll put that back in the fridge. Okay, so I'm just gonna wipe the table down and then we can discuss Ooh. the mulled wine while we're waiting for the pastries to bake up. 
Get my knee like this. While you guys are getting ready, I can put the recipes up again if people want to do screenshots. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So here's the apple gullet with the maple cinnamon whipped cream. You want to do a screenshot. And then next we have the whipped cream ingredients recipe. Very simple. Here's the winter vegetables with the cheese filling. And then the next one is the wonderful figs and chef cheese. Since you're good at dipping it, do you want to demonstrate? Yeah. Okay, so here we have. Oh, wait, oh well, let's give it like a couple of. Well, there's there's some the wine recipe, and then I'll go back to Sarah and Nina. Yeah. I'm going to refill my glass. Just, just oh, okay. one second. Okay. One quick second. All right. Now this is the exciting part. Okay, we got some old wine with brandy. Okay. Uh. Okay, so for this mold wine, can I just tell you, it was super easy. Like it was dump, 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 simmer, and that's it. We did, um, it was 16 ounces of the apple cider. Apple cider. So the little bottle, like the, um, the 16 ounce bottle of apple cider. Um, we did one, um, was it the pink lady apple? Or we did Granny Smith, Smith Granny apple. Smith, yeah, because of, of the tartness, yeah. right? Um, we did one orange. Yep. Uh, we did a couple of uh, cinnamon sticks. We star did anise. star anise. And cloves. And I did, we did add some clove in there. Um, if you don't have star anise, you can just do clove. If you don't have clove, you can just do star anise. If you don't mm -hmm. have both, I mean, then just do the cinnamon sticks. Yeah. Um, but nice it really does, you, but the, the clove, the star anise, really, really, like it definitely um, set up. Like it's really, really good. Um, and then we just, we let the apple cider with the fruit and the spices simmer for a little bit. Um, I've seen it like 15 minutes and then we'll add in the red wine. We use um, a red wine blend, but you can do a Merlot. Mm -hmm. What other red wine would be good, do you think? Like Merlot, mm -hmm. red wine blend. We did talk about, um, what was the other one that we talked about earlier? Cabernet. Cabernet, because maybe. that may be too, too rich. That might be too rich. Yeah, right, yeah. but we used a red wine blend, which actually worked perfect. Um, let that simmer. I mean, the more you let it simmer, I feel like the just, flavor develops. Yeah, just don't don't have it on a high um, on a high um, on a high heat. I think that would cook the alcohol if you have it on a high would, heat. Yeah. yeah. So we just put it on low heat to let it simmer for as long as possible, just to develop that flavor. And so um, it's just... And it's really, it's, yeah, it's really good and it's perfect. Like after a long day mm -hmm. when it's cold out. Yeah. Sitting by a fireplace, reading a book. Like anything, mm -hmm. any occasion. And we also added some brand. It, I didn't measure, which is not good, but we just put I mean, it in. It was, a feel. It. it was like a feel of it, you know? Um, but I'm going to say maybe about I mean, like a half a cup or a quarter of a cup. I think it was a quarter cup that we did. Yeah, it wasn't too, too much. Um, and yeah, you just let it simmer on really, really low heat and it's delicious. So mm -hmm. how, because we're fancy up in here, we... <laughs> um, we're gonna show you how to assemble if you're maybe doing it for like a dinner party, maybe Christmas, and you wanna do you know, something fancy. What we have here is we have some honey. We're gonna rim our glasses. So we have some honey and we have some cinnamon sugar. So what we're gonna do is, so since honey is very, very thick, we wanna make sure we put a very thin layer of honey on the rim. Mm -hmm. You don't want it, you know, drooping down and you don't want it looking like they wanna be fancy. <laughs> so we're gonna quickly just Dip it in, quickly dip it in, turn it, turn it, turn it until the honey goes all around. Okay. Like that. And then you want to just into the rim. I mean, into the cinnamon sugar. And the cinnamon sugar really does 
was like the oh mm. my god, oh my it, god. Was it was like a good it was like the perfect addition to it like mm -hmm. and then we'll add a little bit not a little bit we'll add a good amount of the of the mold wine um, it's perfect it looks like a frosty rim like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. and then well you know because we're fancy <laughs> um we're gonna do a little bit of you can either put the apple inside or you can put it on the rim and then you have and look how pretty oh a piece of look art up. yeah <laughs> Look how pretty that is. Yeah, that's oh, lovely. Wow. Yeah. That's really nice. Yes. Very nice. nice for you. Oh, well, thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. And then I'm going to do, well, I'll do one more. It's okay. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> do one and while one. we're doing this, and while we're waiting for the galettes to, to bake, if anybody has any questions about how to make the dough mm -hmm. Or the different techniques of how to make the dough. I mean, yeah, or even like about like culinary school, because yeah. we both did different programs at Cambridge School of Culinary Arts. So uh, we have cool. different experiences there. Um, so yeah, ask away. But no like personal questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, no, um, hi, Kim. Kim. Okay. Um, do you, um, how long in advance could you make the dough? Um, oh, yeah. So for the dough, you can make it up to three days in advance and stick oh. it in the fridge. Yeah. So if you want to like make, um, wait, cheers. Oh, cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, cheers. I'm drinking a chai. <laughs> Perfect. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Runs in the family, Adine. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course. You know, so, so you could actually make it three days in advance of actually. Yeah. Making. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And also like we only we chose mini tarts just to showcase or sorry, mini galettes to showcase different flavor combinations that we can do. But you could easily make it into like a nine inch pot, like nine inch sized galette too. So like you can just like double the filling. Um but the um dough, the recipe for the dough itself will fit a nine will fit a nine inch mm -hmm. um, pie, pie dish. Pie dish mm -hmm. basically. So yes. and you can use this the recipe for pie dough as well. So instead of like the three discs, like for mm -hmm. the three, you could just for the it would be one big one. Yes, yep. exactly. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you okay. want it to be really terrible and cheap, could you get the Pillsbury dough pie <laughs> crust? <laughs> and then yeah. just do the filling and fold dough. it over. I mean, it might not yeah. be the same. I mean, you guys chose the butter and, and, and that butter and kind of flour, but um you know just if you were doing it with kids you know exactly maybe. yeah totally you can do it with store-bought dough yeah i mean you could still it would still work the same it's, it's not, not as, as good but i mean it's still <laughs> it's still good i mean it's still and it's good to like you know um work with oh i'm well, sorry the experience of doing it yourself i think builds mm -hmm. confidence mm -hmm. and also as you were saying you know when you were talking about the the glaze try different ones and mm -hmm. what you like best. So exactly. yeah, you're willing to make a mess. That's exactly. what artists need to do too. Yes, <laughs> yes. definitely. Yes. Because you can clean up later on, it's okay. Make a mess in the process, do what you gotta do. And you know, mm -hmm. play, around, play around different flavors and stuff and yeah. yeah. See what I, you come I, up I, with. <laughs> yeah, it's really all about the process, mm -hmm. not the starting point or end point, just like kind of what happens between there. Yep. What other cheeses would you suggest yeah. to make with the fig? Um, with, with the cheese? fig? What, yeah, what type of cheese do we recommend with oh, fig? I, I, I mean, brie is really good. Yeah, brie. A, a nice, a nice um, soft brie is really, yeah. really good. Okay. Um, with fig. Yeah. I would say the soft cheese. Yeah, any type of soft yeah. cheese that, um, okay. yeah. that that'll mm -hmm. like melt and not burn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Smell stuff. Oh yeah. Oven smelling too. really good. I mean, it's doing it's doing its thing. It's mm. it's doing its thing. Blue cheese is really good with fig as well. Oh, yes. Yes, oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. good. Even gorgonzola because it's yeah, good. Thinking, because the saltiness of the gorgonzola. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking gorgonzola. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I know my mouth is watering. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. Okay. Yeah, cheese is life. Cheese is delicious. <laughs> <No. laughs> 
Is there so such there, a thing as a chocolate galette? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, you can totally do chocolate. Absolutely. Yeah, you could like, um, let's see. Yeah, I guess you would, you might want to lower the oven temperature down a little bit just because the chocolate can burn mm -hmm. because there's a lot of fat in it. Um, so I would just lower the oven temperature a little bit and like maybe to 375. Um, and maybe shorten the baking time just a bit. Um, but yeah, I don't see why that wouldn't work. So yeah, yeah, you can totally make I'm here trying to think about different different things that I can do with chocolate and a galette. Mm -hmm. Maybe like- um, Yeah, what would you, strawberries. Also shaving on top. Yeah, oh, berry galette. Yeah, bear, a berry galette with like chocolate shavings on top. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Or raspberry, like a raspberry filling. Raspberry, what else would we put in it? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's just like so many options. There's yeah. so many things that you can do. Like another thing, if you want to, like, if you don't want to bake the actual chocolate is to like create the, um, like put like fruit down or whatever. And then when it's come, when it's um, taken out of the oven while it's still hot, like put um, like chocolate, what did you see? Chocolate shavings. Chocolate shavings and then mm -hmm. it'll just like melt it just to- You can do like a fruit, a, like a berry filling and then chocolate shavings on top. Once you take it out, let it cool down. Go, so what are the things- that the two of you were talking about was, you know, the really fancy fruit tarts and so on. And I mean, for me, honestly, I, the, the thought of eating something more like, of like rustic looking is much more appealing uh -huh. because sometimes, I mean, I have bought those beautiful fruit tarts that I'm almost like, I don't want to even like mm -hmm. bite into them. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know? I mean, they're just, they're just real. They really are like these lovely works of art. Mm -hmm. And, um, but something like what you're, you know, what you're baking tonight is so appealing to mm -hmm. me and um yeah. i mean honestly i wish i think we all wish we could be in the kitchen with you guys <laughs> all we wish you so much fun <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. so i wanted to ask is there a favorite thing that you each like to bake is there like mm -hmm. you know do you have a favorite thing that you like to bake yeah, yeah. oh look i mean this Go for um <laughs> my favorite is dominican cake that's my favorite because it runs in my family Dominican cake and pies. Those are my two favorite things to bake. Um, well, now like, you have to tell food. us what's in a Dominican yes. cake. Oh, what is a Dominican it's, cake? It's um, <laughs> bread. very, it's a lot. It's a lot. The actual, like, um, the actual batter is a pound of sugar, a pound of butter, 12 eggs, um, Dominican vanilla extract, which I'm telling you, Dominican vanilla extract is beyond this. It's so delicious it's it has its own unique smell and flavor mm. i wish i had it here i would have had you smell it i'm gonna show it on <laughs> but it's super delicious um i grew up with my uncle making it when i was younger he was like the baker of the family and that's how i actually got into baking was because of him and um so you bake all bake that batter and then you um uh you frost it with um a dominican meringue and it's basically mm. like um it's like a Swiss meringue. So it's uh, egg whites, sugar, and um, what's the Swiss meringue? It's egg whites, sugar. I think that's it, actually. Egg whites and sugar. Yeah, yeah, and that's pretty much it. And it's just so good. It's so good. And the fillings, you can do like pineapple filling, mm. um, dulce de leche filling, guava filling, very like tropical fruits and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's what I love. Yeah. That's what I love. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really like making cookies and flaky pastries like croissants mm. or like chocolate croissants. Um, I also like making um, eclairs. So that's like with a pat of shoe and pat of shoe dough. Um, and yeah, like filling it with like a chocolate ganache um, and finishing it with a chocolate icing or something. So yeah. Are like when you guys are working, you know, when you're doing your personal chef work, are there certain desserts that clients typically request? I call her. <laughs> um, so what's important to know about our clients is that they have very specific dietary needs. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, like using butter is something that they do not want. So um it's very like health conscious, um, oh, like gluten-free, um, just like alternative baking methods. So like the other day I had to make um, cookies, um, dried apricots and raisins and quinoa flakes and almond flour and mm -hmm. like coconut oil instead of butter. 
um, and maple syrup instead of sugar. Um, they turned out actually really good. Um, but like for me, that's not, um, what's the word? It's not fulfilling taste wise. Cause like for me, I want that butter flavor. I want <laughs> like all the good, the goodness of it. But I mean, like, but yeah, like dessert wise, like with, um, I mean, I love, I love trying different things. So when I tried the cookie that she made, it was delicious. <laughs> it's different. Like it was, it, it wasn't, definitely tastes different. it wasn't like your regular, you know, like, like your, like, you know, buttery cookie, like, you know, with actual flour, yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. all flour and stuff. Um, but it was actually really good. It was chewy. It wasn't hard. No, it was like soft. So you did good girl. Thank you. Girl. You're so <laughs> kind. <laughs> He's a That's scientist. I mean, that's what I was about to say. It was the sort of the creativity and the science involved in trying to, you know, come up with how these different flavors, these ingredients will will work together and, and be satisfying as a cookie, you know, for the yeah. client. So interesting. It's experimenting. That's yeah. what it's really about. Mm -hmm. You know, then you had to do that a few times. We were yeah. using the, was it Phil, um, Phyllis, um, Silum husks. Silum husks. Psyllium husks. Psyllium husks. Psyllium husks. So yeah, so yeah. sometimes clients, instead of um, using an egg, they would like us to use like a chia seed egg or a flax seed egg um, or a psyllium husk egg. And that's like, so chia, um, flax and psyllium husk, they gel really well when liquid's yeah. added to it. Right. So it, um, made, it helps, um, provide structure when you're baking the product. So those are like egg alternatives that we like to use if a client doesn't want us to use egg products. And it does a job. And it, does, it works well, yeah. Like it's definitely a great alternative. Do you guys have a place you'd recommend for us to go to get like Dominican vanilla or, or other specialty Ooh. things like that? If Myrna is on here right now, Myrna, I might need your help if you're on here. I don't know if you are or not. Um, I don't think she's on here anymore. Okay. Um, ooh, for Dominican. You could uh, email us and I, we can just- I will. I have, to, I have to, yeah, I have to ask and see. I know that I went to a Dominican restaurant in Dorchester. I just don't remember the name and they had really good food there, but I can't remember right now. <laughs> I mean, I can make it. I mean, if you really want a Dominican kit, you just have to, you know, Hit me up and yeah. I'll definitely contact Sarah. You. So in my on my page, <laughs> I actually have Dominican cake in a cup in a jar, mm. and it's a Dominican cake in layers. So I have the Dominican <sighs> cake base, and then I have the filling, and then I have the soup. It's called suspiro, like the the um the the frosting is called suspiro in Spanish, and it's basically like a Swiss meringue. Um, it's light and fluffy. Um, and I have a layer of that, and then you know, continues on and on until I fill the cup. So if you ever want to try, you can always hit up Sarita Sweets. <laughs> Dominican trifle. Yeah, yeah that's basically what it is. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, How are the galettes over. doing? Oh, oh they're, actually, they're actually, I think they're almost done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me actually Perfectly brown. Oh, yeah. look at more. Oh, yeah, look at I need just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. Oh, then I have another question, which was, um, you guys said you did different programs at the Cambridge Culinary School. What were the yeah. two different programs and why did you choose the ones you did? Um, I did the professional pastry program, which was a two semester, it was like what is it, nine month, it's a nine month program. Um, and it just focused on pastries primarily. However, there was like, a five week period where we did all savory things. So that was like soups and stocks, uh, cooking different types of seafood, meat, um, pizza, like Italian food, fresh pasta, things like that. But we definitely focused more on like different types of dough, um, breads we did. Um, and yeah, so like the first half of the second half of the professional pastry program are split up where, um, the first part is very foundation level. It's like building your um, pastry education. So you'll learn like all the basic information, like the different functions of ingredients, for example. Um, and then the second half of the program is like advanced sugar work. So making like sugar sculptures, um, chocolate sculptures. Um, we, we had to make like wedding cakes, 
Um, and yeah, and then both pro both um, semesters, there's final practicums where like you have to make something. You're like given a piece of paper the day of and you have to come up with recipes um, and present it in front of your chef instructors. Um, and they, it's like a all day process yeah, and it's very stressful, <laughs> especially like in the second half of my program, that was probably one of the most <laughs> stressful experiences that I've had like pastry cooking wise, for example, compared to social work, it was it's literally a piece of cake, but, um, but yeah, mm -hmm. cooking wise, it was a very stressful. I remember that day. I remember practicum. It was, I, I remember it so well. <laughs> it was, it was stressful. Um, I did the certificate, no, the chef certificate program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was kind of like, it was all in, um, it was like a half semester. No. Is it a half like semester? Like a four month program? Yeah. It was from September to January. It's like a four month program. Yeah. So that was like all like the basics we did. Um, half was um, savory. And then the other half was like baking. Um, but I do want to go back to do my, my full, um, the professional program. But soon, that's going to be soon. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But you do, you do learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Like in that little bit of time, I learned so much because the classes were from like, they were, um, I think it was even like nine hours a day, like nine, a nine hour day of just half of the day in the classroom. Another half is in the lab, you know, cooking. And so it was, it was a lot, but I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. Our instructors are great. Yeah. Actually, they were super fun. <laughs> One of my instructors is currently on the Holiday Baking Championship. Yeah. Uh, Food Network or Discovery oh, Plus. Oh, his name is oh, really? Yeah, Jody. his Nasty. name is Chef Jody. He's from Ireland. His I'm obsessed with him. He's very, very nice in person. And he's, he's rocking it too. He's, on Holiday yeah. Baking. He's doing, he's good doing job. so well. I'll have to check that so, out. Yeah. Oh. He's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I wanted to also ask, like, do you really enjoy like what you're doing now or do you do either one of you um want to work in a restaurant setting do you want to open your own place together like have you given any of that any thought um i for me i don't um want to work in a restaurant just because it's very fast paced and i'm someone who likes to like take their time when making things um but yeah, I don't know. I would not want to work in a restaurant. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like doing what I do now. Mm -hmm. I like um, catering. I like catering. I like, you know, um, you know, catering events mm -hmm. and, you know, going to someone's home and cooking for them or, you know, like yeah. cooking, you know, and delivering their food. I like doing it that way. I feel like in a restaurant, it's so fast paced. You kind of, it becomes like a job in a yeah. way. With what I'm doing now, it's not really a job for me. It's like, it's what I love. Like it's my passion. So I don't see it as like, okay, I'm going to go to work today. I think with that would be kind of different. Yeah. It would be more mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to be doing this today and just that. Yeah. But exactly. catering, we're doing everything. Like mm -hmm. we're, we're creating the menus. We're, um, you know, talking with the clients. Mm -hmm. We're prepping. We're shopping for them. We're delivering. We're cooking for them. So it's an all around experience. I'd rather just stick with my yeah. catering and, <laughs> and working with Nina and yeah. Yvette. I'm happy doing that. So, mm -hmm. and I just want to grow in what I'm doing right mm -hmm. now. I want to grow in catering and, exactly. you know, maybe soon, you know, who knows? becomes bigger than ever, but um, yeah. So I really enjoy this type of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's fun too, because we get for the catering thing, like for example, we're doing um, a tea party this weekend on Sunday that we're super excited about. Um, so, and it's like, it's for a birthday party for um, a child. Um, but we were able to like talk to their mom, um, figure out like what they like to eat and enough for the, um, sorry, one second. Let we're me. checking the, uh, galettes right now. What happened? Oh, they're not doing it. Okay. We're going to give it me how much? We still have four, we still have like four more minutes on our timer. Yeah. A little browner. So, so Nina and Sarah, if people wanted you to cater an event, because that sounds lovely, the tea party, yeah. do they I'm just gonna... reach you directly or do they do go through Queen of the Pantry? Queen of, Queen the, of pantry. the Pantry. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. But if you want us to like bake something specific, you can reach out to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Like a Dominican cake. I exactly. Mean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <don't know> that. <laughs> and we're also doing coquitos for for the holidays. Like, you guys ever heard of coquito? It's, a, uh, it's, like it's a, so good. It's a good. It's kind of like um a Dominican eggnog in a way. I mean, kind of. Mm. It's like a coconut based. Um, it's coconut milk. Um, it's a sweet uh drink, and it's um it's kind of like an eggnog. And there's rum in it, and it's super delicious. It's if you've never had coquito, you definitely need to try coquito. It's mm-hmm. super delicious. Yeah, it's is really it, is it vegan? Is it like a vegan egg? Nut? It could be. Yeah, milk? it could be. I I've actually made oh, I've actually good. made vegan ones that it's just made with coconut no. base. So usually That's for the coquito, you would do like um an evaporated milk um, or whole milk, but you can definitely skip that and do. Um, they actually sell sweet and condensed coconut milk. So yeah. instead of using sweet and condensed milk, you can do the coconut base. Um, you can do coconut milk and then coconut cream. And then add your rum, your vanilla extract, your cinnamon sticks, uh, whatever kind of spices you want. You want to add some nutmeg in there. You mm-hmm. cook it on the stove for a little, you simmer it on the stove for a little bit so all the flavors can marry. And then you can um, jar it up. Okay. And you can actually leave it in your fridge for like months and it would just keep getting better and better and better. Be a good, good thing to make jars of and give to friends. Yep. Yeah. Along with the, the jar of Dominican cake. Yeah. <laughs> that is like there you go. You get the jars already. The, um, what's it called? The mason jars. And then you can fill it up with a cute little bow. Merry Christmas. And you can gift it to your friend. It's super, <laughs> yeah, super easy, yeah. super simple. And I mean, you can make a big, a big pot of it and give it to all your friends and stuff and keep it yourself too you know yeah yeah wonderful more creative possibilities yeah okay we'll get this yeah so we're just going to take it out and show it to you guys so that looks like i mean it smells delicious it smells really good oh, beautiful oh look at it oh sorry oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> ah, watch out. Out. no it's good no. okay Oh, mm. oh, that smells so well. <laughs> I mean, usually you want to let it rest for a little bit. Yeah, so we're gonna. It away. So yeah, if um, so usually what you want to do once you have this, you want it to cool down completely before you move it, um, because you need to let everything just settle a mm. bit, um, yeah, before like cutting into it. Yeah, because you don't want it to kind of break apart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this I think maybe you can show them one. Okay, we're gonna try to. Oh, this one came out for. Oh, it Ooh, came out perfect. I'd love to see it okay. close up. Yeah. All right. So, this don't is the close up. Yeah, so, this is the apple. And this is the apple. This is the apple. Gonna... See around it. Delicious. Yeah. You see it well? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Maybe I can show one of the other. I'm, I'm feeling inspired by watching <laughs> this. I think it's been very. I've thoroughly enjoyed this, so oh, <laughs> maybe <good>. the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Let's cut into the apple one. Yeah, oh, yeah. we're just gonna. I'll see you this week, maybe Sunday. Uh, here. Yep. So we're just gonna cut the apple one real quick to taste test on camera, and then you have we can to describe it perfectly. <laughs> you know, we're all we're all kind of like you know just. <laughs> all right. So here we have the apple. Now, are you guys going to do the whipped cream on top, though? Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So with whipped cream, because if you just took it out, usually you want to let it sit and then put it on, because if not, it's going to just melt. Which you'll probably see. It's going to happen right now, but, you know. It is really hot. Mm. Well, that is okay. Okay, so perfect. So we have, we cut it into quarters. But honestly, if a person just wanted to eat it by themselves, they could just yeah, eat exactly. it by you themselves. could totally eat it on your own. <laughs> but yeah, you can see it the yeah, um, it's melting a little bit. It's melting, but it's okay. Oh, it's gonna go into our it's gonna taste the same. <laughs> yeah, it is delicious. <laughs> that right. crispy crust. Good Lauren, I take one and we cheers. Right. Oh, cheers this smell must be amazing. Mm. Uh, it's very it's, the, yeah, the cream's melted. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Thank you so mm. much. Well earned. Mm. Oh, so hot.
<laughs> right. don't, don't burn your very lips. Messy. Oh, but you can taste like the um, cinnamon, the maple, everything, everything. And the turbinado sugar adds a nice crust, or sorry, adds a nice crunch on the um, on the what's it called? On the rim. On the rim. Yeah. On the mm -hmm. Pastry. Yeah. On the crust. Mm -hmm. It's like layers of flavor. You get a little bit, a little bit of tart. Get the cream. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just delicious, delicious, delicious. And it's not too sweet. Which it's is not perfect. too sweet at all. Yep. Oh, so, yeah. wonderful. I know. I, I wish we had some like little closing music or something, you know, like um, <laughs> doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. this has actually been wonderful. Um, like my sister said, I think we're all feeling very inspired um, <laughs> by this. And I certainly I I I had never made anything like this. I, I learned some new techniques, some new ways of mm -hmm of baking. And so my sister was saying that maybe, you know, in the, this weekend or a few weekends from now, we're going to spend part of the day making these. Yeah. So, that's so fun. Ooh, I'm send just, us photos. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's a great idea. Send photos. Yes. Yeah, right. It won't that's look up to yes. Anybody who makes it send, send photos. You do we'll put them on that our Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, how long is the nourish exhibit? Um, Available like open in person. So it's been extended. Um, the in person show has been extended until December 11th because okay. there's actually going to be a holiday art market that day. Oh, wow. Um, and um, I think the virtual show, Dean, could stay up longer than that. The virtual oh. show will be there virtually anytime you want to go check it out. <laughs> it may not, may not always be on the top, but mm -hmm. you can. Do a deep dive and see all the old shows while I you eat your that. galette and sip your mulled wine. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, I really, I think for the first, um, you know, our first um, try at doing something like this, you know, presenting something that had to do with art and cooking, I think that this mm -hmm. was wonderful. Yeah, I think great. that the two of you are very warm, friendly people That's and cool. obviously yeah. very capable chefs. Um, so thank you. I think this really, as I said, I think this was a delightful, um, hour and a half. Um, and yeah, so the BGA sure. really, um, the Belmont Gallery of Art really thanks the two of you very much for being a part of this. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much for like thinking of us too. Oh, absolutely. We're so appreciative. And yeah. people who yeah. want the recipes, the BGA will get the recipes to people. And this is also going to be available for people to watch at a later time. That's great. So yeah, where, try it, try it with your kids, with, you know, family on a Sunday. You have it. If you have nothing else to do, get some flour, some butter, some water, some filling, and just, you know, create. It's fun, yeah. you know? It's super fun. And it takes up some time and, you know, and it's good to do with the family. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, you. I love the story. Story. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Of course. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Good night.